Hello guys! In today's video we are going to review a rather unusual piece of gear for us. This is our first review of this type and we don't have any experience using similar sleeping systems. It is going to be a 4-class Tropic 500 hammock from Decathlon. We have never slept in a hammock before and have no idea how to properly set up one. This is all new to us. However, we received quite a few comments about hammocks and we know that some people really love this system and prefer a hammock over a traditional tent. That's why we've always been very interested in trying out a hammock ourselves and trying to find all the pros and cons of this construction. So we think this will be an interesting review and we'll try to make it as informative as possible. A little disclaimer for the new viewers of our channel, we are not sponsored by Forklass or Decathlon, all the products we review from this company are entirely our initiative. We just enjoy testing and using the gear from this company, so we review many items from this brand. So let's start with the appearance. The hammock comes in its soft case, which is made of fairly simple material. At the top, the case closes with a drawstring, similar to sleeping bags or inflatable sleeping pads. This case has an additional pocket along its entire length, where the collapsible poles are stored. This construction is designed to hold the mosquito net above your head. It's a very good solution because we've seen hammocks from other manufacturers where the mosquito net needs to be set up separately and this is an additional hassle to set up and adjust the net relative to the hammock. The poles are made of durable and lightweight fiberglass. Inside the case there is a strap with fastening that attaches to the base of the hammock. We think this is done so you don't lose the case when the hammock is set up. Unlike a traditional tent, there is no place in the hammock where you'll put your things. Your backpack shoes all this stay near the hammock or on the tree. Also, inside the case there is a tuning instruction for installation. For people who are setting up a hammock for the first time in their lives, that's us, this instruction will be very helpful. The basic recommendations say that the distance between trees should start from 3 to 5 meters. These are the most optimal distances. Also, there shouldn't be any sharp twigs, branches, large stones under the trees where the hammock will be placed, to avoid injury and damage in case the hammock slides off the tree or the straps break under any circumstances. Also, the straps shouldn't be bent and should be evenly tensioned. The hammock itself is rolled up with a mosquito net on top. This is the outer part of the hammock. The hammock is wrapped with a mosquito net on all sides. And it's very nice because if there were no mosquito net underneath, there is a high probability that mosquitoes could bite through the hammock fabric and still bother you. On both sides of the hammock there are flat straps. These straps are attached to the hammock not directly, but through a thick cord. We think this is done so that the straps always remain flat and don't have additional contact with the hammock material. These straps are quite sturdy and therefore direct contact with the hammock may possibly damage the hammock fabric. This is just our assumption, correct us if it's wrong. On both sides of the straps, carbiners are attached. These carbiners are made of lightweight but quite durable aluminum. According to the manufacturer's claims, the hammock can support up to 150 kg, which is quite impressive. This is a large safety margin. These carbiners are a very good solution. You don't need to tie nodes to secure the straps, you can adjust them very easily and quickly. You find a suitable tree, wrap it with a strap and secure it with a carbiner. At the base of the hammock, the straps are fastened with an adjustable mechanism. This mechanism consists of two brackets through which the strap is threaded. This mechanism is very similar to what climbers use. Very simple and reliable. To release the tension, you just need to pull on the yellow strap and the tension will be released. The hammock has tuned-in plastic caps, which are the pole fixers. The poles themselves must be threaded through the hammock material. After setting up quite a few different and unusual constructions of various tents, the hammock's construction is not difficult for us. It seems very simple and intuitive. Setting up the hammock, finding suitable trees and a place. If it's a dense forest, it won't be difficult. To tension the hammock, it is advised not to do so too tightly, but at the same time, it shouldn't sag. Experimentation with tension is necessary, as it is crucial for quality sleep. It's also recommended to lie diagonally in the hammock, so your back won't be under tension. We found a suitable spot in the forest. There were two trees growing about 3 meters apart. We start from one side. The side can be any. But it's important to remember that entry into the hammock is only from one side. If bushes are nearby, you need to think about the optimal location of the hammock's entrance for the terrain. And we happened to find such a place, there were small bushes under the hammock. Securing the strap turned out to be very simple. We wrap it around the tree, without overbending the strap as recommended by the manufacturer, and then clip the carbiner all very quickly and easily. 
We did the same on the other side. As expected, we didn't succeed the first time. We didn't calculate the height ratios correctly. One side was secured too high, so Dima started sliding down immediately. Apart from this problem, we faced the issue of setting the hammock too low. We had to change the position several times to achieve approximately the right setup. Inserting the two poles into the mosquito net also didn't take much time. The poles are identical and there is no difference in their sides. Inside, we see a large pocket that extends almost the entire length of the hammock. Overhead and the feet, there is a hook for hanging a flashlight. That's all there is inside the hammock. On the outer side of the hammock, at the back, there are three hooks for securing small items. And on the entry side, there is a hook for securing the cover. It's convenient, you can put additional items in the cover and have quick access to them when you are in the hammock. Let's talk about comfort. Despite what we thought was achieving the optimal height and even positioning, comfort wasn't added. It's very uncomfortable to get into the hammock. From lack of habit, it seems like it will tear and you'll fall to the ground, a very unpleasant feeling. Without a sleeping pad, it seemed uncomfortable, with the back sagging significantly. But with the sleeping pad, we face the next problem. The pad still tends to slide down. To the point that we position the hammock slightly lower with the head, the pad still doesn't stay in it and constantly slides down. It's a very unusual feeling when you stay inside. There is no place for your hands, and when turning to the side, there is nowhere to put them, only alongside the body. The hammock constantly sways. From not being used to it, we began to feel motion sickness quite quickly. We can't imagine sleeping like this all night. The slightest movement starts the hammock swaying, and this rocking stops very slowly. No matter how much we tried to find the optimal position, it was still very uncomfortable for us. The mosquito net is of course good, but it's very obstructive when getting into the hammock. You have to bend your head, and also closing the mosquito net isn't so simple. There is no problem with the head, but at the feet, you have to sit and reach out with your hands to the net. And at the same time, maintaining balance, there is a fear of overturning and falling out of the hammock. So our first experience left us with bad impressions of the hammock. All we wanted is just to lay a foam mat on the ground and just sleep like that. It's unclear to us how to lie in the hammock and constantly sway without the ability to stretch out your arms. Perhaps, of course, these are the first inexperienced attempts with this system. What did we do wrong? What could be the reason? You can share your thoughts and recommendations with us in the comments. We'll be grateful for any advice. For now, at the moment, we have a definite conclusion. The hammock is not for everyone. It is suitable for very harsh ground conditions, swamps, dampness, rocky soil, but if you have a chance to find a flat spot, we recommend setting up any tent, and in our opinion, that would be the best solution for quality sleep. And that concludes our first hammock review. This is our first experience and maybe we did something wrong. Please share your thoughts about it in the comments and we'll try to correct these mistakes. Perhaps this particular model of the hammock didn't fit our height or weight? What could be the reason for such discomfort? Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay notified about our new videos. You could support our work by making a donation on Coffee platform or by becoming a member on our channel. We appreciate your support a lot. Thank you for staying with us and have a great hiking adventure, everybody!